When you distribute, you are multiplying. I put that in my notes. When you distribute, you are multiplying. And I'm glad you made that mistake because I probably would have forgot to tell everybody that. So you're not adding, you're not subtracting, you're multiplying. Okay? When you distribute, you are multiplying. Make sure you write that in your notes. And maybe write this problem down with it so you know what you're doing. So, Bria, Briley. Oh, I'm getting really close. Hey, Briley, what do I get when I do negative times a negative? Positive. Positive what? Um, Four times D is just 4D. 4D, very good. And then a negative times a negative is a? Positive. Positive. What's 4 times 4? 16. There you go. See how we had to multiply as we went through? And we multiplied the signs. I kept the signs. I did the signs right. Negative times negative, positive. Negative times negative, positive. Okay? Pay attention to the signs. All right, let's do the other side. So this equal negative 4D plus 6 parenthesis 2D plus 6. So Griffin, distribute the 6 for us. Tell me what you're going to get. And again, I'm distributing the positive sign with it. Positive times positive, positive times positive. That would be easy. But go ahead, Griffin. Tell me what you get. 12D. Very good. 12D. 6 times 2 is 12. Hmm. Plus what? 12. Oh, what did he just do? What did he just do? He added and he should have been what? Multiplying. See, I'm telling you, when kids distribute, you have to multiply every single time. Do not add. He just said 12D, which he did totally right. And then he said, plus what? 12, what did he do wrong? He added what he should have what? Times. Six times six is what? 36. 36. I'm glad you made that mistake, because I'm going to make it now rather than tomorrow, right? Make sure you multiply all the way through. Do not add. That's where people mess up when you're doing distrib distribution, when you're doing the distributive property. Okay, let's do the next part. What should I do next? Uh, what do you think, Dakota? Can you add the variables? Which ones? Do I add variables over here or over here? Negative 4X. Yeah, I add these over here. Why? They're already on the same what? Same side. Same side. Remember we mentioned this, and it should be in your notes. If variables are on the same side, combine like terms before you get them to the before you take them to the other side of the equation. If the variables are already on one side, add or subtract like terms before you take them to the other side. So what is 12 minus 4? 8. 8D. That's this side. Plus the 36 didn't go anywhere. It's still there. Okay? That I only do that side. Now what do I do? Now I have variables on both sides. Danny, what should I do? Uh, variables over here and over here. What should I do? Minus 16 to both. Sides. Okay, now he said minus 16 to both. What did he focus on? The numbers. The numbers. Really, he's still okay if he does that. But what should he focus on? The variables. The variables. So focusing on the variables, Danny, what do you want to subtract? You can either subtract 40 or 80. You choose. What do you mean? I mean, what, don't you want to subtract 16 to 36? Okay, I'll do that. I thought you wanted to. Okay, I'll do that. It's yeah, fine. It's right. fine. I'll do that. Now he's made a choice, though. Danny's made a choice now that he's going to get the D's on the left. If I would have done it, I probably would have subtracted what? 4D to the 8D, I can get the D on either side. I would have focused on the D first and kept it positive. But then he's made a choice now. He's saying, I got to bring the D to the left. So what would I do next, Danny? Uh, subtract 4. Actually, okay, I can do divide, that. Divide by 4. I'm going to subtract 4D. He told me to subtract 4D. I'm going to do that. Can I do whatever he says, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, it won't make it better, <laughs> but I can keep doing it all day long. Okay? I can do whatever he says. What's your goal, Danny? To get the answer. And how am I going to do that? 
solving the equation. And how am I going to do that? Uh, use your brain. Get the variable. The variable. Oh, by yourself. The, and how close are you to getting the variable by itself? Not very close. Not very close <laughs> yet. But you're getting there. We're going to get there if it takes all day. Okay, go to the next. What do you think I should do next? Then look at this equation. What should I do to get that variable by itself? I'm going to divide by four. Wait, what did you say first? Then I have to divide everything by four. First, he said subtract 20. He said subtract oh, 20, subtract then okay. divide by four. Say, we're just going to get crazy. <laughs> you're still not getting the variable by itself. Remember, you got to pedal backwards. you got to pedal backwards. you got to get rid of add and then get rid of what? Multiply. If you don't, you're not going to get anywhere, okay? So I want to subtract 20 first. And then do what? Now you're getting closer, because now the D is getting closer to being by itself. So Danny, what's the next step? Uh, divide by main 20. To Not no, quite. 4 divided by What four. is on the same side as the D? The 4 is. Yeah. So that's what i got to divide by. Whatever is on the same side as the D is what i got to get rid of. So I end up with D equaling what's negative 20 divided by 4? Like negative, negative 5. Negative 5. Good. Now, how many of you would have took that many steps? <laughs> no, because when we get here, even this step isn't a horrible step. But instead, what should I do here? Minus 8 what? D. I want to get the D's opposite the number part. Negative 4D equals 20. Then divide by negative 4. And what would I get? Positive. Positive divided by negative is a negative 5. See, I would have been a lot faster. But it's because, what do I focus on first? What did I tell you to focus on first? The variable first. If you will focus on the variable first, your life is a lot easier. If you don't, your life is going to be more difficult like Dan's. I mean, seriously, this is why he doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> because he keeps switching variables both sides. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to change this girl, then I'm going to change this girl, then I'm going to change... Yeah, that is not even a girlfriend, man. You gotta focus, dude. Focus. You gotta get the variable by itself. You can't just be, you know, going on a date with her friend and then she gets mad at you and then she hates you. No, that's not how it works. Yeah. You gotta get the variable by itself, Danny. Focus on the variable. I think just a little advice, you know. Did he skip number ten? It's free. Okay. You skipped number 10, Tom. Oh, I skipped 10? All right, we're going to do 10 now. Yes. Okay, here we go. Writer, distribute the negative 8 for me. Negative 8C. Negative 8C, very good. Distribute it again. So distribute the negative 8 to the negative 10. What does that give me? 80. 80, positive or negative? Positive. positive 80. Negative times a negative is a positive. 8 times 10 is 80. Notice he multiplied. He didn't what? Add or something weird there. Okay? Make sure you multiply. Now, I have to multiply through the sign. Okay? I'm multiplying through the sign. Just the sign. Multiplying through a negative. What's that going to give me, John? Negative C. Negative C. Plus three. You're really kind of in the wrong class. Do you yeah. want to change? I'll help you. <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. Do you want to go to a regular class? Sure. Are you okay in here? Because mm -hmm. seriously, I think the board is stiff, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I had three of you last year that were board stiff the whole year, and I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so, yeah, if you get too bored, then let, let us know, and we'll help you get to a regular math class. Because this is a little bit slow. We go slow here. All right, Nick. Now I have a C on the left. I have a C on the right. I have numbers left and right. Danny would just randomly just start doing things. But Nick is going to focus on the <laughs> variable. So what do you want to do? And I don't care what, what you do. Eight. He says add 8. Okay, I'm going to do that. Doesn't matter whether he adds 8 or adds C. No. Doesn't matter. I'm going to add 8. He likes to be positive. I like to be positive. Nick and I are positive people. Like so we're going to add 8. So we have 80 equals 8 minus 1 is 7c seven. Seven plus 3. Now what? U minus 
three. Yeah, now I focus on the variable. So this is what we're talking about right here. Pay attention to this, Dan. Focus on the variable. We're trying to get the variable by its what? No. Self. And who said minus three? Was that you, Tristan? No, writer. Right. Okay, writer, you said minus three. So I want to get rid of addition, and then I'm going to get rid of the multiplication. So minus three. That's 77. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. 7C. All right, Canyon, what do I do last? You got to do, you got to take your time, think about it. Oh, okay, yeah, you got to divide. Divide by what? 7. 7. Not 77. There, if you divide, divide by 7. So, because I want the C by its what? Self. Self. Whatever is on the same side of the C is what I divide by. So, this is 77 divided by 7 is? 11. 11. And you can do that on the calculator if you need to, but it's 11. Okay. Which one are we on? You got the wrong one. Jeez. Now we're on 12. 12. Okay, so now we're going to go back to, because we already wrote this equation. We already thought about what it meant. Okay, and remember, it's going to be the number of hours you work times your rate is going to give you your total amount of money you make. So how do I solve this equation, though? It's 7.5 times x equals 71.25. How do I get that hourly rate by itself? Divide. Divide. Very good, Griffin. Divide by what? 7.5. 7. <coughs> 7. Now, this one I'm going to need a calculator. 9.5. Because I'm not that good at this. So, 71.25 divided by 7.5 is? 9.5. 9.5. What does that mean, by the way? $9.50. That person's making $9.50 an hour. Not bad. Wow, looks okay. bad. Is that good or bad? He's getting paid more than me. <laughs> Maybe you need a new job. For a high school kid, that's an extremely good wage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nine fifty would be, yeah. Even my second jobs are like sixteen to twenty bucks an hour. You had what? My job in Minnesota was fourteen an hour. There you go. Wow. And there's also jobs like just calling hey is ten bucks an hour. It's pain in the butt work. I'll be on. I'm getting in the butt work for the I'm okay. <laughs> I was going to say, but, but it does pay 10 bucks an hour. So, yeah. so yeah, Holland Hay usually pays 10 bucks an hour, but it's just hard work, so there is that. All right, uh, next one, 13. Oh, I erased it. Dang it. Okay, so what was the equation we had? Five times. We had the amount of money you get in, $28, plus P for the locker, times five people, will cost $180. Is that what it was? Yep. Okay. Now, Couple things I could do. This is kind of one that you have some options. What could I do first? Divide five into 180. I can divide five into 180. I can get rid of it. Or I can distribute it. Does it matter which one you do? No, I'm gonna divide because I like making things smaller. I'm always for making things smaller. I'm minimalistic. This is 36. This is 36? Yeah. See, and that makes my life easier. Now, by the way, I'll do it both ways, so you can see that you get the same answer. But. Okay, now I should subtract what? 28 and 36. Just 28. Remember, focus on the variable, get it by itself. Whatever's on the same side, get rid of it by doing the opposite. P is what? 36 Eight. minus 28? Eight. Eight. It costs how much for a locker? Eight dollars. Eight dollars a person. Now, this is kind of like at Lagoon, by the way. When you go and you go to... Uh, Laguna Beach and all that. But aren't their lockers like ten dollars? <laughs> well, I understand, but that's what I'm saying. Is, is in this case, this, these guys are only charging what? Eight for the locker. Gosh, but, I wish they that cheap down here. <laughs> yeah. So here's something else you want to think about on this one, though. What if I had distributed? Would that have been okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. Somebody do that for me. What's five times twenty-eight? One forty. One forty. One forty plus five p equals 180. It would have made your numbers bigger, but it doesn't make the problem any harder, really. Now what do I do to get the P by itself? Subtract 140. Yeah, I just subtract 140. So it's 40 divided by 5. 5P equals 40 divided by 5. And what will you get? 8. Still get the same answer. Okay, so it won't matter whether you distribute or whether you divide first. I divided first. At any time, I always look at this. This is how I do it. I look at the number in front. I look at the number on the other side. If I can see that that divides evenly, I do it. Because I know it'll just make things smaller. And I only do it when there's only one parenthesis. Notice on 
10 and 11, how many parentheses were there? Two. There were two, so I distributed, didn't I? I didn't even think about it. I just distributed. How come I do that? How come I change my mind from one problem to another? And by the way, it drives kids crazy because they're like, wait, he just divided, and on the previous problem, he distributed. How does he know when to distribute and when to divide? And it has to do with whether there's only one parenthesis or what? Two. And whether it's equal to only one thing or a whole bunch of things. If this was equal to a whole bunch of stuff, there was variables over here and things like that, then I would have distributed for sure. But because there was only a number, it was divisible by the number in front, that will make it easier. So I always look, how do I make things easier? Because you have to remember, math people are inherently lazy. That's why we become math teachers. I'm really lazy, so... Good. You're going to be a math teacher one day. Because honestly, we don't like to write a lot of papers. We don't like to do a lot of work. We don't like to guess like they do in, you know, what's the conch. The conch is just this shell. I don't know why you're doing this to me. Right? Why are you trying to tell me it means something? So, yeah, those English teachers, they just make stuff up. Just say. <laughs> we don't make anything up. This is what it is. <laughs> There's nothing made up about math. It's just, it is what it is. All right, next one. 14. 14. We subtract the 4C, what does that leave? Negative 20. Negative 20, and what does it leave on the other side? Negative 20. Is that true? No. Yes. Yes, negative 20 equals negative 20 all the time. So what's my answer? D. Infinite oh. solutions. Infinite solutions, B. Anytime you end up with things that are equal, by the way, what if I add 20 to both sides? Zero, zero equals zero. If you end up with zero equals zero, there are <laughs> infinite solutions. It makes you smile. You're like, everything works. This is like, I honestly think that one of these equations where you end up with the C's canceling, or I mean, that's what heaven is. Because then everything works. So there you go. You're this definitely a math teacher. Makes you smile. That's that's always gonna work. Yes. What kind of nose is that? Mmm. There is there. It's it's, it's it's it's. I don't know. <laughs> it's a really bad nose job. <laughs> <laughs> but it still looks cool. So we're at least smiling. You know, it's all good. All right. Here we go. Uh, how about? 15. Well, 15 I'm not sure of yet, because I've got, notice again, I have a parenthesis on the left, but on the right I have how many terms? Two. So I'm going to distribute, because I have two terms on the right. Okay? So distributing, what do I get? What's a negative times a negative? 21. Positive. Positive 21N. Then plus 21. No. Minus what? 21. How come it's minus 21? Because of the... Negative times a positive. Okay, and then on the other side I have negative 21 plus 21n. What should I subtract? Well, it don't really Focus matter. on the variable. It don't really matter. You're gonna get subtract 21 what? You're just going to get n. You're going to get n? Those ends go away. Those ends go away. What's left? 21, 21. Negative 21 equals negative 21. Is that right? Yep. Is that true all the time? Yep. So the answer is? Both those are infinite solutions. On the test, it might not be, by the way. So I'm just kind of warning you. What happens if the variable goes away and it's not true? So you had negative 21 equals 7. Then what's the answer? What happens if the variable goes away and you end up with, let's say this wasn't a negative 21, but it was like negative 27. What if this was what you ended up with? What would the answer be? No solution. No solution. Okay, so if you end up where the variables cancel, or add, in, add out, right? If the variables add to zero, and you end up with something false, the answer is no solution. You might want to write that in your notes, okay? If the variables add to zero, if the variables add to zero, and you end up with something that isn't true, negative 21 equals negative 27, or something like that, and it's false, then your answer is what? No solution. If you end up with something true, negative 21 equals negative 21, then the answer is infinitely what? Many, or infinite solutions. Okay, everybody got it? Uh-huh. Okay, so that's everything for the test. This is your review.
If it was me, I would go home, write the problem down on a separate sheet of paper, exactly like it is, rework it out. Because that's how you get really good on test scores. You go home, you write it down on a separate sheet of paper, you work it out, and you see if you get the same answer again. If you can do that, are you going to get them right on the test? Yeah. Oh. That's how you review for a math test, by the way. You redo the problems a second time just to see if you can do it. Okay? If you can do that tonight, then you'll be in good shape. All right. You're good for today.